Welcome back to the channel, y'all. We are here in the heart of South Texas. We got something different for you today. I've never hunted this part of Texas for white-tailed deer. My gosh. You talk about terrain, we are not that far from Mexico, and we are in that nostalgic part of Texas where you've got these large chocolatey horn good sized bucks the opportunity at the biggest white tail of my life happening in this series so subscribe right now this series is going to be brought to you by buckshunting.com buckshunting.com link down below go check it out new thermal hoodie drops new gear uh, bino harnesses all sorts of hunting tools and you can use my promo code lfg and save at checkout now this week's going to be pretty awesome because I'm hunting with my dad. I don't get to do that that often and we are both going to get the opportunity at a deer. And not just any deer, this could be both of our biggest whitetails of our life happening out here. So this opportunity is just something that happened. Uh, we're hunting with a friend of my dad's, Art, and it just so happens that he knew a guy that had this uh, amazing ranch. It's a 5,000 acre ranch. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this is a high fence, but hunting in 5,000 acres, even though it's high fence, it's gonna be like hunting low fence whitetails. I'm gonna be a little itchy on the trigger. I'm gonna try to get one with my bow. We're gonna go see if we can get that opportunity, but if not, we brought the 308 as well. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna ride around, do a little scouting, check out the facilities, and get amongst the cactus, the rattlesnakes, the jackrabbits and the big white tail down here. So let's get in the ATV and let's go check it out. Exploring the ranch with art, it is immediately clear that this place is gigantic. We actually got to learn a lot about the ranch too. And what's interesting is this ranch has been in the family since the 1800s when they originally traveled over from Italy. And it's eventually been parceled up between the family members. And originally, it started out at over 200,000 acres. That's hard to even imagine. And you wouldn't think in this low growing vegetation that there would be very many hiding spots or much to eat for these deer, but it's full of mesquite trees that have mesquite beans, a lot of protein. You can look at the cactus and see where they've been nibbling on that to get moisture. It's crazy how these deer have adapted and I quickly learned that these whitetail are much bigger than the normal central Texas deer that I'm used to hunting. And in addition to that, they've managed this place really well and I'm told that there's some very old deer out here, 10 plus years old. They've also added protein feeders to increase antler growth as well as cottonseed, which I had never even heard of, never seen cottonseed fed to deer, but apparently they love it and it's good for their antler growth. Another cool story about this ranch is they give back to the young hunters and they set up a youth hunt every year where these young hunters can come out and experience looking at some bigger deer than they probably would anywhere else and really get to learn about deer habitat and hunting in South Texas. All right, doing a little scouting. This spot is called the junkyard because there's literally a junkyard back behind me. There's a fenced in protein feeder over here. And we've already been to one spot that it was just straight cactus. It was gnarly. And I was trying to figure out where I could put a pop-up. Out here, it is more open. There's more opportunities for a pop-up. And uh, it's not the most visually appealing, but there's a lot of sign. I'm seeing rubs. There's a ton of tracks. There's a big game trail. Heavy, heavy game trail coming into here. My gosh. Okay. Some more rubs over here. This is a spot. Okay. We got good intel. This is just the 
this is it. Yeah. Look at that rub right there. Oh, they've been chewing on that cactus, too. They've been chewing on that cactus. I just got cactus in my leg. Ow. I think I want to set up in here. There's a feeder down there, but there's just foot traffic everywhere. Alright, we're going to go ahead and set up. This spot is just littered with scrapes, rubs, poop, traffic, the whole nine. Alright, we're going in to Cactus Land. Gotta watch out for those demon sausages in here. Got a few cactus in the leg, but we're brushed in. Looking pretty good with a 25 yard shot. My blind is a little broken, but I think it'll work. Oh my God, everything is sticky out here. What's to get you? Well guys, we just met the owner, Hector, and we are gonna just go ahead and head out and hunt. He said this this spot that we set up a blind is a good spot. And we also talked to uh, the ranch manager down here and he said that's a good spot. And he showed us uh, a picture of two deer that we could possibly encounter. One being uh, just a giant, like 170 inch 11 point, and then uh, a really, nice eight point that they're calling a call but it's gonna be hard not to pull back if I see that deer good vibes down here in South Texas I just had some of the best tamales I've ever had in my life shout out to Delia's amazing tamales um, we'll see how that works out in the blind but me and my dad are gonna to sit together we're gonna to be hunting together for most of this trip I, I think and um, it's just it's just gonna be fun sit with my dad so let's hop in the ATV let's head out there So we did a little bit of clearing, and we're looking pretty good. Blinds brushed in, it's looking good. Dad, you're nervous. I did not 
see that deer until she was right in front of the blind. That's how thick it is. So I've got the front screen up right now. We're going to leave that up, and hopefully that'll prevent deer from uh, from seeing us. But I put some uh, some mesquite branches on top here. It's, you guys can probably hear it. It's making some scratches, some noises. That might freak them out too. But we're just learning here today, day one. It's going to be very difficult to get one with a bow. That's for sure. starting to get a little dark, y'all. I think we're just going to be seeing this one doe. Our first deer encounter. Dad's knees are killing him. <sighs> Here's what I'm thinking. All right. Because uh, we got the other guys out here, and they've been seeing deer. We're not seeing anything. There's two good bugs that are coming here, but the thing about South Texas is it's brush beyond belief, cactus and brush. And there's, it's so thick that like, I literally did not see that white tail until she stepped out five yards from me. So that is why hunting out of a box blind is so popular down here. With the rut going on, we're gonna be able to see a lot more from a box blind. Yes, I want to kick, I want to get one with a bow. I want to sit in this ground blind and see it. 11 pointer step out right here but what they're they're chasing right now we're entering like peak rut we're just going to be missing out on seeing a lot of deer and maybe miss a lot of those opportunities where they're just chasing a doe through for 20 30 seconds and you get a split second opportunity if we see a deer cross through here just trot through here that's going to be about a four second opportunity we're not even going to get be able to film it Film-wise, dad's knees, the rut scenario, <laughs> I think that we'll, we'll probably end up in a box blind. Here's another scenario that I want to run by you guys. So we were talking about maybe coming back here in the morning. All right. If you saw the size of the rattlesnakes they've killed out here, I'm a, I usually don't get freaked out about rattlesnakes. I'm a little freaked out about these rattlesnakes coming into this blind crawling up in here you know what I'm saying that snake we saw was at least 10 feet it, yeah it was at least 10 feet long the guy was holding it it was, it was just like he was holding it like this it was touching the ground it's insane so they're they're coming out right now they're getting ready to go into hibernation I guess I don't, I don't really know I just know they're out it didn't actually, they said, like, shoot whatever you want. It's one of those deals. Like, this isn't a paid hunt. This is just like a buddy. He's like, come shoot whatever you want. But out of respect for the owner, we're, we're, we're trying to get a good age on the deer and at least shoot, you know, something that might not be as desirable for somebody else. We don't really care. But it's an opportunity of a lifetime to get both of our biggest deers ever. Alrighty guys, wrapping up first night in South Texas. What have we learned so far? My goodness. Well, we saw two deer. We had two deer encounters. We had a doe come in at about five yards early. She spotted us right away in that ground blind and she took off and then there was a buck right at the end of the hunt that he stomped. He was probably 10 yards away. I couldn't even see him. It was so thick. Uh, and he you know, didn't blow or anything. I heard him run off. That's how I know it was a buck. Didn't, didn't blow like a doe would. We got back to deer camp, had some amazing steaks. Uh, just talking to uh, the other guys out here um, and the ranch owner, he's out and he said, deer were moving around, uh, rut activity high. 
um, and there's some incredible deer moving around right now. So I'm not gonna lie, it was tough, tough hunting on the ground. What's hard to uh, really show on camera is that there is no trees. Like it's not like I can pop up in a, a post oak or a live oak out here and, and hunt from that. There, there are none, there are none. It's just mesquites, it's cactus, it's nasty, nasty terrain. So I think the best opportunity that we're gonna have is to jump up into a box blind and get that rifle out, especially with the rut going on, deer, deer moving a lot. Either that or possibly doing spot and stock. But we're being told by the ranch owner, hey, you guys need, you guys need to shoot deer. This is the rut, it's going down. Uh, I'm gonna keep my bow hopes still in the realm, but rifle hunting I think is gonna be our best chance uh, to see. You can see out, you know, long ways on these Senderos, two, three hundred yards, and um, and get those bucks that are encountering those does right now. So I think that's that's the plan for tomorrow. And hopefully we see a big end. So it's gonna be morning before you know it. Stay tuned. Good morning. It is go time with the rifle making a quick little pit stop right now and we are putting a corn spreader on a on a brand new Ford Raptor that's how we're gonna roll uh, maybe for the afternoon and and possibly this morning we're gonna go sit in a box but there's so many bucks moving around um, chasing does that this is the way they do it down here they uh, they spray in some of the open areas and when the rut's happening, they're chasing the does. Gives you just a way bigger field of view to see, uh, you know, just a lot more opportunities to see bucks. So pretty neat little device. Goes on the, uh, the tailgate. Just come and get it. No, not yet. No, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I know it's still dark, but I just gotta give you guys an update because up here in the box right now and we've already seen about eight avalinas on this road and I'm staring at a buck I can't tell how big he is yet but he turned his head and he looked really wide through the binos so this is a spot where there's an 8 pointer and a 11 pointer that they really would like to see harvested so me and dad are going to try to get that done, but I already feel so much better about being up here, um, being able to see down four Sunderos right now. I can see a lot, and honestly, I would want to come back here with the bow. Those Avalinas came in at 20 yards, so I'm going to wait for the sun to come up a little bit so you guys can uh, look at these animals, but I already feel really good about this hunt today. an eight point, a mature eight point right out here with these javelinas. I think this is a target buck. This is a really nice eight point and um, I really would like Dad to shoot this deer. This is one that they wanted to uh, see go down. I'm pretty sure they said any mature eight point but this one's really thick. He's coming in about 65 yards right now with these javelinas. So as soon as we get decent light, we're going to take a peek at, oh god, yeah, he's a good deer. He's a really good deer. Oh, he's going off in the brush. He's going off in the brush. Might smell a doe or something. These javelinas are still here. Did you see how wide he was? He's a big deer. Buck on the road, buck on the road right now. The 
This is actually the smallest deer that we have seen today. He's still pretty much mature, but he's an eight point. But these other two bucks we saw were heavy horned. I think it's just a matter of time until those bucks kind of circle back and get on some does. There's actually a group of does. <laughs> shot right there you want to come closer if you don't feel comfortable don't take the shot can you see the red dot in the middle the yep. reticle yep. okay all right he's, he's gonna get on that dough I think
coming out. What's that? Where are you going? Oh. Just heading out into the wild yonder. Yeah, just, you know, I'm just gonna stretch my legs. <laughs> All right, Joe, it did, uh, it did not happen this morning. Um, but I am pumped from what I saw. Had the opportunity at 150 yards. <laughs> I wasn't comfortable. If you weren't, yeah, if you're not comfortable, don't take the shot. Don't take the shot. Just be prepared when you get back to camp to hear a little I know. You're going to hear some. Uh, actually, one of our buddies, he said he shot a trophy buck. So I'm really excited to see. And he's in a, yeah. he hunts a lot. So if he says it's a good one, it's going to be a dandy. Uh, if that big buck that Dad ended up uh, passing on would have stood out here to my left for like 10 more minutes in the morning probably would have had enough light to take a shot but he went off into the brush and uh, he ended up coming back later but that was like 60 yards and that's even within bow range right now we're gonna go take a look at what a trophy buck out here looks like and uh, get regrouped for uh, midday and then afternoon hunts Ooh. what's happening here dad oh my goodness Look, oh my gosh, look at this giant. Looks like mules. Nice. Golly, man. These are huge. If you look at them, they're exactly the same, but this one's bigger. That is a giant heart. My gosh, man. Congratulations. Better cook the fajitas tonight. Oh, that's his job. Oh, 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 baby. <laughs> what do you think right now? Well, I'm a little disappointed in myself. I've got a motivational speech from you about being prepared to kill. You know, I should have been comfortable, but I just wasn't. So I didn't take the shot. But looking at these two massive deer behind us, wow. Motivation. Yeah, I'm motivated. We're gonna get one before the trip's over. It's gonna happen. We gotta get it done, Dad. We gotta get two deer. You, we're not leaving here until we get two deer. My goodness. Yeah. That's probably over 200 pounds. Wow. You ready, Justin? Let's go. Are we going? Take them around. Okay. We're going to unload the box right here. Uh, yeah. But on the way back in, we spotted a bunch of does out there. There's this, there's this little area where it's wide open, and uh, we just saw bodies, massive bodies. By the way, this, this buck right here, nine years old they're estimating and uh, over 200 pounds, probably like 220. So uh, I'm gonna go with Hector here. We're gonna do a little spot and stock. I'm gonna take the big rifle and we're gonna try to uh, find a giant down here that might be mulling around. So taking the GoPro in, you guys stay tuned.
Woo. Sit down next to that cactus. That thing will say hello. End of this video, end of um, basically a full 24 hours of hunting. The caliber of bucks you guys have seen. I mean, we just saw Art, Art got a absolute, one of the biggest eight points I've ever uh, seen. It actually ended up weighing 220 pounds. It's gonna be some incredible meat. So, you know, it's not all about antlers and everything like that, but you don't get these opportunities every day. So we at least want to get some meat and we at least want to do the landowner justice and, and get the deer that he's wanting to, uh, to get out of here. I'll gladly raise my hand and take that job on and, and so will my dad. So um, I think the next, the next book that comes out, dad, 150 yards, that's a pretty juicy one. Just, just going to go ahead and do it. Just going to go ahead and do it. But guys, don't ever, uh, don't ever pull the trigger if you're not comfortable, you know. Uh, this, me and my dad, we, he got it, literally his first deer with, with us together a few years ago. I'll actually link that video because it's so awesome. Um, using his dad's old rifle, and just a really cool story. Two stories of the trip. It's not, it's not all about antlers and, uh, and don't take a shot unless you're comfortable. But so excited for uh, the next phase of this hunt. It's, it seems to be evolving. Because uh, we've been in the ground blind, we've got in the box blind, we've done spot and stock, we, we, we rattled uh, very th at the very end of our uh, little spot and stock rattling, saw a giant, saw a giant. He was like 600 yards away though. And once we got around the corner, he was gone. So we're in that mid kind of lull for the day, uh, but we're gonna get back after it soon, guys. So I don't know, I might get back in the, in the box blind with a bow and carry the rifle. Uh, the rifle's not leaving my side, but I wanna keep the bow with me. Uh, I'm rambling because I'm excited, but make sure to stay tuned for the next part of this video down here in South Texas. The South Texas giant chocolate horn bucks. Giant bodies too. These are way bigger than I was expecting from uh, driving through Central Texas and, hunt and hunting there uh, quite a bit. So you guys stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, and I'll see you on the next adventure.